Hello there. Today, well, today you're going to get scientist, Michael. <laughs> today, we are taking a look at my original pod V1. I mean, this is like old school, baby. With a little patent and everything back there. The pod V1, I never updated it. So this is like when it came out, revolutionary, absolutely game changing. I think I may have worked at Guitar Center when this came out, uh, maybe a little before. I worked at Guitar Center for about six months. It was the worst six months of my life, back when I was uh, like 21, 22 or something like that. But uh, I met great people there. So it was one of those, you gotta be there pod was out and I remember talking to the line six rep going what are you guys doing this is the worst looking thing I've ever seen uh, totally not useful not ergonomic it's unrackable it's un uh, I mean this was kind of before pedal boards were like popular so no one was thinking like can I put it on my pedal board it was just like why and he told me he's like why is a you're talking about it B is it's so recognizable. Instantly people go, that thing, I want that thing. And they didn't want to get wrapped up in the the Digitex, which were just like, whoo, down so out of fashion. And the, the Elisa stuff and all of that rack gear for guitars was so on the down. So they're like, we're gonna do something totally new. So check this out. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, what it is, you know what, before I keep talking, I better make sure it turns on. I have not turned this on uh, at least 20 years, maybe more. Here we go. Look at that. Yes. All right, great. Good job, line six. Uh, so check this out. This is super cool. Um, you've got all of your tone stuff here. So that was always a big thing because you were coming uh, from the era, like, you know, this is early 2000s, I think. Um, coming out of the era of terrible do 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 turn trouble up, boop, 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 boop. That stuff was just uh, really tough to, to tweak. You've got your selection, your classic, Fenders, Marshalls, Voxes, there's a Saldano. You could option click to an alternate, but none of those really sounded that good. Um, and then you've got effects. Uh, dude, unbelievable. I can't even tell you how revolutionary, revolutionary it was to be able to go to a Fender and a Rotary and just put that down and then jump over to a dual rectifier and uh, put that down. It, it, this thing was unbelievable. And everyone thought like, this sounds amazing too. I haven't heard it in a hundred years, so I can't remember if it sounds amazing, but shall we? Let's plug it in and see. I wanna give my first impression. So um, I've got my, my Shabbat here, which is a great sounding guitar. So it's giving a lot of uh, help along the way, right? So let's start with, let's just go to rectified. Okay, I don't remember if these jump or how the levels work on this, but no effects. And we're gonna just center on everything for a minute. All right, here we go.
I mean, it's not bad, right? I mean, it's not... It's a thing. It, it doesn't have a lot of, like, harmonic detail in it. Um, there's high end and there's low end, and, and there's a mid-range, but there's just no, like... That thing that amps have all of this harmonic detail swirling around. Um, there's none of it. It's just kind of like dead, D-E-D. -E So, but you know what? Usable, I could make something with that, I think. All right, let's, let's check out some other sounds. Uh, Fuzzbox, all right. Again, usable. Usable. I mean, not the, again, not the most harmonically rich uh, thing ever, but uh, what do we what do we got here? I'm gonna skip the just the pod one. Small tweed. Would it be cheating to put on a reverb? Well, let's put on a rotary. So be modern class a black panel black panel so that's going to be you know As I recall, I did two sessions where I was engineering and used the pod both. So Steve Hunter, legend, legend. Steve Hunter, he was on A Little Ain't Enough from David Lee Roth, as well as Alice Cooper's like main guy and all the classic hits, Steve Hunter. Uh, he showed up and he had just had eye surgery. I'm like, who's this guy? Pulls out a Squire Strat uh, and we plugged it into the pod and keep in mind, this is like 2001. I don't know how square strats were not well known as being like bangers. <sighs> that dude just crushed. We, he put on the rotary and was like, oh my gosh. And another was um, with Craig Ross from Lenny Kravitz band, the great Craig Ross, you know, are you gonna go my way? Uh, he came over, plugged in and was like, oh, tell me about this. I was explaining it to him. He goes, yeah, yeah, this is cool. I have something like this, except it's with real amps. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, he, but he plugged into the pod. I remember him, he laid the, down the solo and it was like, this is amazing sounding. And, you know, two great, great legendary players. 
pretty pretty cool pod clean this is gonna be super clean <laughs> Pretty ugly clean sound. Modern Class A, uh, Vox AC30, or Matchless, I can't remember. Never loved this. Ugh. Oh, take the compressor off. Maybe that's the problem. I remember these knobs do change to where, you know, because an AC30 only has a cut, so it's a little different. Me no like. Ugh. Brit Class A. Modern Class A is the matchless. Brit Class A is the Vox. Not great though. Uh, Brit blues, blues breaker, you know. There is no open top end whatsoever there. Good golly, it's like, is my tone knob down? Nothing. Ah! And then it gets so nasty. I wonder if these were using IRs or if the whole thing was modeled. I don't know. Brick Classic is JC800, which means that was anticlimactic. Like, is my guitar broken? Maybe it's a plexi? Oh, that low end schmudge. I don't know. Oh, that's not bad. It's probably better than a lot of the recorded 80s tones. Delay, chorus, delay, chorus. <laughs> How about just delay? Delay. sounds like a laser but uh huh not terrible right
Does the V1 pod hold up? I don't know. I'm going to go with not really. Um, the real giveaway was when I tried to do something with it. It just, it's, it's kind of like plasticky. Uh, I don't know if that's even the right adjective. It just has no detail. There's lots of bottom end or there's frequencies where there shouldn't be frequencies that are just poking out. And then everything that's supposed to fill in the body and, and create this beautiful wall, uh, is just like not there. Um, and it makes sense because all of the frustrations that we all had with mixing tracks that had pod heavy pod guitars, uh, I mean, a lot of pod guitars, uh, in early versions of Pro Tools with just bad samples and drum machine, it all is adding up. It's like, that's why, because the sources weren't very good. Uh, so pod one, uh, I guess I should, I could put it back in the box for another 25 years and um, see how it sounds again then. Maybe it'll be back in style. We'll see. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.